If you've been following this channel for the last few months, you probably know that I've been looking for a moon swatch for quite a while now. I traveled to quite a few cities this year, and for every city that had a moon swatch store, I always checked it out and I was always disappointed when they had nothing left. And eventually, I kind of just gave up on the idea of buying a moon swatch. I thought, you know, it's maybe not worth it, and there's other watches that I can check out in the meantime. And then eventually, a few weeks ago, I decided to check the swatch website and I realized that Edmonton, their swatch store was going to carry the moon swatch as well now. So I went to the store just on a random day just to see kind of what it was like and maybe talk to the employees. And lo and behold, they had five models available at the time. And after about five minutes of deliberation, I thought, screw it, I'm just going to buy it. I've waited so long for this watch, I may as well review it. So now I finally have on my wrist the Moon Swatch Uranus Edition. Now I can finally answer the question with all the hype dying down, is the Moon Swatch still worth it? Let's find out. So because this watch is so popular, there are dozens and dozens of videos and articles that review the moon swatch, so I didn't want to do a traditional view for this video. So instead of doing my usual format of unboxing it, then talking about the specs and the wrist shot and etc, I'm actually going to split the video into why I think the moon swatch is bad, and why I think the moon swatch is good. Starting off with why it's bad, we gotta talk about the materials. This watch is mainly made out of bioceramic, which is supposedly two-thirds ceramic and one-third organically sourced plastic, but honestly, it just feels 100% like plastic. The matte finishing of the case paired with the pastel-like color makes it look like you can take a bite out of it, like a candy necklace or one of those Lego-shaped candies. This makes the watch both look and feel cheaper than its $320 Canadian dollar price tag. The light blue bioceramic of the Uranus model also shows dust and dirt a lot easier, especially at the lip of the bezel, so you'll have to clean this watch a lot more consistently. Another material that's arguably unfavorable is the acrylic crystal. And you've probably already heard the stories on how easily scratchable the acrylic crystal is, and I can confirm that within the first few days, a few light scratches began to appear. I'm not exactly sure what caused these long streak lines, but thankfully they aren't too visible at most angles. Swatch does offer free polishing at their locations, but it still sucks that it scratches pretty easily. Alright, the second reason why this watch is bad is the movement. It utilizes an ETA Quartz chronograph movement, and it's very, very loud. But don't just take my word for it. Here's a few quartz watches to compare it with, starting with the Citizen Chronomaster. To compare it with a more affordable watch, this is the Seiko STBR021. So even at maximum sensitivity, my microphone couldn't pick up the ticking of these watches. Now let's listen to the ticking of the Moon Swatch. So as you can tell, the ticking is pretty loud. Now there could be a few reasons why the moon swatch ticking is so loud. The most obvious reason is that the movement isn't high quality and it just, it's very loud. But also maybe the materials don't isolate the sound well enough because it is made of bioceramic. I'm the type of person who gets annoyed easily by the ticking of a watch. And in fact for this watch here, I left it on my desk while I was writing the review. And I think because of the, the metal desk, it was amplifying the sound. And it was so annoying that ticking that I actually put the watch away while I was writing the review because it was just too much for me. In addition to the loud ticking, the Moon Swatch has all the features of a cheaper quartz watch, such as having stuttering hands. The stuttering or backlash is most noticeable in the chronograph hand, but you can see in this slow motion video that even the central seconds hand is also stuttering. You can also see that the chronograph hand is misaligned, which is a common issue with more affordable quartz watches. I don't mind misalignment too much, but it sucks that when you reset the chronograph hands, it resets to a misaligned position, which breaks the symmetry of the dial. Now to be fair, I might just be asking too much from a $300 chronograph watch, but maybe this is a reason why you should spend a little bit more for a chronograph watch, that way you'll get a better movement inside. The fourth reason why I don't think this watch is good is the strap. I don't think the strap is going to last that long. And I get that astronauts wore Velcro straps when they went to the moon, so technically the strap is more faithful to the original Speedmaster, but I feel like Velcro is going to fray after a few years. Think about those velcro strap shoes that you wore as a kid, they usually didn't last more than one or two years. You can see that the strap is starting to form quite a few creases and wrinkles after a few weeks of use. So overall, out of all the straps and bracelets that I've owned, that being silicon, leather, stainless steel, and titanium, the moon swatch strap feels like it's going to give out first. The next thing I want to talk about is size. Now this is more of an issue that affects only small wristed people. But like other watches that have a lug to lug of about 47 millimeters, it feels just a little bit too large for my 6 inch wrist. The design of the strap also causes it to stick out at the bottom, making it look bigger. 
And if you have wrists that are smaller than 6 inches, then the strap will likely overhang a bit because the strap is a bit too long in my opinion. And even though the strap doesn't overhang for me, because the strap is secured only by velcro, sometimes the end here will get undone when it gets caught by something like when I put on a jacket. And while I would say that the moon swatch is unisex in design, I would say that the sizing is definitely geared towards people with larger wrists, so it really sucks that I didn't come out with a smaller version. I think it'd be really cool if they released a 42mm version alongside a 39mm version for those people with smaller wrists, and they've done this before with the 39mm Speedmaster reduced models. A few other things to keep in mind, the loom is pretty bad. It's not a deal breaker I think, but it's something to keep in mind that the loom is more cosmetic than it is practical. Also, the water resistance is rated to only 30 meters, so I wouldn't take it swimming. And finally, we gotta talk about the price and availability. I think the moon swatches are a little bit overpriced. 320 Canadian dollars is quite expensive for a swatch quartz model. I think they usually go for 1 to 200 Canadian dollars, so I feel like this watch could sell for maybe 250, 275, but I feel like 320 is pushing it a little bit. I think for this price range, you can consider other quartz chronograph models like the Timex Q that was just released. I feel like it's a pretty good deal for 270 Canadian dollars. Stainless steel design, the Panda Dial, I think this is a great deal. You could also look at the Siegel 1963 models, which are on AliExpress for around 200 Canadian, 250 Canadian dollars, which is also a great design. And of course, availability for the moon swatches is still pretty bad, unless you live in Edmonton, of course. Apparently those five models were sitting there for weeks now, so if you want to travel to Edmonton, definitely you can pick up a moon swatch. But for the rest of the world, you might have to wait a few more weeks or a few more months. And of course, Swatch pulled that fast one on us, so it's not going to be available online. You will have to buy it in stores. But they are doing like this, this kind of Swatch, Moon Swatch tour, and I think they're doing it in Europe and the US. So that could be another way to buy the watch. So overall, while availability is getting better now, it's still hard to find a Moon Swatch. And there's definitely alternatives out there that are cheaper and more easy to get. Alright, so we talked about why the watch is bad. But now let's talk about why the watch is good and there's two main reasons why and the first is the design i mean the original speedmaster moon watch was already a great design that i feel like is timeless and classic and the moon swatch captures that with different colorways this time now i can't speak for all the different moon swatch models because i only have the uranus model but i will say that this watch looks great in all sorts of lighting conditions we start off indoors with window lighting and i think it looks pretty good then we switch to outdoors on a cloudy day then we move back to indoors in dark conditions. Now here it is indoors with fluorescent lighting. And finally here is indoors with incandescent lighting. So you can see that the watch looks great and the time is pretty legible in all sorts of lighting conditions. So I give that an A+. I also have to give praise to how the design is so iconic and unique. Even though this watch has the blueprints of the Speedmaster, the colors and materials make it so different that I feel like you can't mistake the two. I find it really cool that if I'm walking around and I see someone wearing one of these, I instantly know that it's a moon swatch. There's no mistaking it for a Rolex or a Seiko or just another swatch watch. You know that this is a moon swatch because the design plus the color scheme are so unique to the moon swatch. So if you do end up buying a moon swatch, you'll be buying a watch that not only has a great design, but the design is so unique and iconic that it's instantly recognizable, not just to the watch enthusiast community, but people in general, they know about the moon swatch. So if you are looking to buy a watch that will serve as a conversation starter, I feel like the Moon Swatch is a great affordable candidate. Now the second reason why you should buy this watch is the horological significance behind it. Now this watch, again, it doesn't have the best movement, the design isn't original, but just think about how much hype was behind this watch. I can't think the last time when a watch was released and thousands of people across the world were waiting in line to buy it. Even watch brands that are popular to the general public like Rolex you don't see hundreds of people around the world lining up for the latest release at 4am. Now maybe I'm wrong and there is a watch that was released where thousands of people across the world line up to get it, but as far as I know, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity where everyone was so hyped to get this watch. I think in maybe 25 to 30 years, I'm going to look at my moon swatch in my collection, I'm going to think about all the hype and all the stories behind it, all the controversies, and I'm also going to think about how I went to the Toronto Eaton Center, Montreal, Vancouver, and Vegas, searching for the watch and that whole journey, I'm going to remember it fondly. So in conclusion, this is why I think the Moon Swatch is bad. First off, it was the materials. It feels cheap. It feels light. I feel like it won't last very long. The movement is very loud. It just feels like a cheap movement. It ticks very loud. It stutters. 
The second hand is misaligned. The strap I don't think is going to last very long. I feel like the velcro is going to fray or the strap is just going to fall apart and I don't see it lasting any longer than a few years. The size is also a little bit too big for me. I wish they released a 42 and a 39mm version so I feel like they really missed out there. The loom is pretty bad. It doesn't really last longer than 5 minutes so it's definitely more cosmetic than it is practical. It's only rated to 30 meters of water resistance so I wouldn't take it swimming. And finally, I do think it's a little bit overpriced and the availability is still kind of dodgy. And as for reasons why you should get it, I think this watch has a great design. It's using the original Speedmaster as a blueprint, but it's also adding new colors that make it iconic and unique. And while the materials and color might make this watch feel cheap, I can't deny that this watch looks beautiful in photos. And finally, we can't ignore the horological significance of this watch. I think this was one of the biggest collaborations we've seen between two watch brands, and I think it was one of the biggest watch releases of the 21st century. And while it did cause some controversies, I think it did bring the world of watchmaking to the center of everyone's attention, and I think the Moon Swatch will be remembered for years and years to come. So as we approach the end of this video, I have to admit that my original intention was to buy the watch, review it, and then just sell it right after. But after owning this watch for the past few weeks, I think I'm going to keep it. My journey with the Moon Swatch has been so fun and interesting that I feel like it'd be a crime to end it by just selling it off on eBay. So for me, the Moon Swatch saga has concluded. From visiting the Swatch store in Toronto, to Montreal, to Vancouver, to Vegas, to finally finding the Moon Swatch back in Edmonton, I think it's been a great journey. And if you're asking yourself if the Moon Swatch is still worth it even after all the hype is gone, I would say that it is. Just make sure not to buy it at those inflated reseller prices because I feel like that's not worth it. But anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. Subscribe for more content. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.